Hello everyone, it's Birdie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. I need, I need therapy. So here we go. I'm having a time with myself today. I'm not being very uh, gentle and understanding with myself. I'm being very critical. So I thought I better check in and call my YouTube counselor friends and do some therapy. So I made myself a hot cup of orange tea, and uh, I'm going to get that on my warmer, and let's get started. I have had some ideas. Is that turned on? Sometimes if you don't get it just level, it doesn't turn on. There we go. Okay. I've, I've watched a video today. What's his name? I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. I will. I am going to do a video on him. Uh, Spotted Fawn knows who he is. She sent me the link last night. And I've been watching him today. His name's Carrie. C-E-R-I. Something or another. And I will get all that and get it to you. Um... He was doing prompts. He's got, in celebration of his 70 million, 70 bajillion, 5 bajillion followers, he has given out 100 free prompts. I'm not a prompt person, but I'm going to learn to be. Because I think when I'm stuck, that will help me get out. Let me make sure we're in frame here. Perfect. I think the prompts will help me get going with myself. Like, I could probably use prompts on these right here. Let's just do it. Let's pull out the prompts that I already have. And let's just do some on this while I'm talking to you. Fawn and I got together a couple weeks ago, and we did prompts together on Facebook Messenger video. We just had a play day, and... Uh, and I wrote a bunch down, and they're in this little crock bowl that I got in an estate sale clean out. So I thought I could use that for my prompts. And I'm just going to pull some out and get me started while I do my therapy. I uh, have some ink here, and I found this pen in the estate sale clean out stuff. So I was just going to try it, see if the pen works. And we'll do that too. Where's my hanky? Okay, now, let's pull out a prompt here. Let's pull out five, and we'll do all five on all of these, and we'll do them in what order we want. Three, four, five. Okay, stamp flowers, or paint, or draw flowers. Add fiber or beads for texture. Use map. Draw a coffee or a teacup. And space. Okay, none of these are colors or anything. So it looks like we're going to have to just go with the... Get us some colors and stuff on here for background to get started. Uh, I know I can do map. I've got a map somewhere. Matter of fact, I saw one on the floor over here. Let me go get map page. Okay, we're going to use the same prompts on all of these, and we'll see just how different we can make them all look using the same five prompts. How's that? Um, I... What do I, where do I even start? See, you normally have a counselor ask you things to prod you into starting, and I don't even have a counselor, so I don't even know where to start on my therapy today with you. Well, it started with this guy, this Carrie guy. He was talking about prompts, and one of his prompts was add a label from a tin or a jar, you know, trash you have. He was saying, uh, 
he was saying, you know, people think they got to get a digital or go buy this, that, or the other, or buy labels or make labels or whatever. And he's like, look in your trash. Good grief. You throw away labels all the time on your jars and, you know, stuff like that. Start using those. You've got free art supplies, basically. I'm, I'm saying this in my, my ver paraphrase version. And immediately, my brain starts going, okay? I am pretty sure I have an issue with... I wouldn't call it hoarding because it's not overtaking my life, but I'm a collector, a collector of free stuff excites me, and I collect it thinking, you know, I could use it one day. So my brain immediately goes to, practically, I'm just going to be honest with you because I need therapy on this. My brain practically goes to, oh my gosh, go to the cupboard and start ripping labels off of cans. No, birdie. You take them off when you wash out a can that you have used that night for supper, and then you can use that in your, you know, your art practice. You don't go ripping labels off of cans and jars that are in the cupboard. You're right, you're right. I've got to calm down, I tell myself. Well, then I'm thinking, uh, you know, I've got all that... You know, I've got all that stuff in the barn for garage sales that I got at that estate sale clean out. Well, I need something. What did I need today? Oh, I needed a nut chopper. I'm out. Okay, I got to slow down, get, go back to the labels. So I noticed when I did the dishes this morning from breakfast that I had a pickle jar in there in the sink to wash out because I emptied the pickles. The last pickles went into husband's lunch. Well, I'm thinking, here we go. There's a label on this pickle jar. I get to keep the label. Yay, look at me. I get to keep the label. There was also a... Um, What do you call it? Find your words, Amy. There was also a bean can in there that I used last night. Now, so I noticed this shape of the bean can. It was shorter than normal instead of a regular size bean can. It was shorter. And I thought, oh my goodness, with a cute little label on that, that like uh, art paper or something, that would make a cute little can to put pins or markers or something in. Or glue sticks, you know, anything like that. So that was in the sink also to wash. So yay, I get to keep the label off of the bean can also. I have two labels laying in the kitchen drying because they're going to soon be art supplies for an art prompt. Then, so I'm telling myself, what am I going to do with the jar? I mean, I've got to do something with the jar. I've been saving jars for probably a year now. I started putting them in the dog room. I have one of my bedrooms. I call it my dog room. It's where the cat litter box is and the animals get fed and, you know, animal stuff is in there or the vacuum sweeper, you know, it's like a utility room, kind of. Well, when I get a jar, I wash it out and I put it in there on a shelf. And they've been stacking up. So, this summer, I had decided I was going to take them out to the camper. Whoops, I can't use that. That's my prompt. I was going to take them out to the camper. So, you know how the seats in a camper, the bench seats where the table is lift up and there's storage underneath them in your caravan, your vintage caravans? Well, 
I started putting those um, jars in those cubbies. I now have an entire cubby full of jars and I'm starting to accumulate them in the dog room again. Now this is what goes through my mind, okay? I'm gonna explain to you what goes through the mind of me as a collector. Well, if poop hits the fan one day and China comes in or Russia and cuts out our grid system and we need to be able to kind of go back to the 1800s again and grow our own food or, you know, do whatever we need to do. We can't go buy or sell at the store because China is taking us hostage or whatever. I may need that jar to put my whatever in that I'm growing on my homestead to try to survive. I may need those jars. Or if I'm bartering and trading with somebody because I didn't prep the way I was supposed to and I'm trading them out some firewood for some beans, I'm going to need a jar to put them in. That's what goes through my head. So, I've got all these jars. And now, I find myself not being able to stop. Throw the jar in the dump, Amy. You don't need 50 million pickle jars. Throw this one in the dump. What do I do? I'm telling myself this as I'm washing it out and sitting it in the dish drainer. Throw it in the dump. Guess what? It's in the dish drainer drying. It's not gone to the dump yet. I need to get this under control because one baby step like that is probably where the hoarders start. So then I'm out feeding the squirrels and I feed them walnuts and I have these um, Tupperware bowls, they're, they're heavy duty, they're the heavier ones, they're not like a lightweight butter dish because what I do is how do I explain it do I have something here I can show you oh I have to explain it so you understand okay let's say this is our this is our um, Tupperware bowl so what I do is with the lid I drill a hole here and here and I run a piece of wire here okay so I turn this bowl I don't want it to seal I want it to just sit on top loosely with this wire hinge so the squirrels can lift it up and get their walnuts out of it because if I don't if I just lay the walnuts up there the blue jays take them before the squirrels can get them all eaten notice I'm putting a map on each one because one of our one of our um prompts is use a map. So I'm out there putting squirrel food in and and I do give some to the blue jays, but what I do is I get the walnut halves, map, map, map. I get the walnut halves and the blue jay will carry off the whole half. So what I do is I break the nuts up into little pieces so the blue jay comes and gets one, he carries it off. He comes back and gets one, he carries it off. It takes him longer to go through the um it takes him longer to go through his his nuts. You know, gives him something to do. Well, I'm out there every day, every morning, and I'm breaking up these walnut halves with my fingers and putting them where the blue jays, I have three or four little places I hide them and the blue jays find them and come get them. It's like a game between me and the blue jays. So I'm out there breaking up these walnuts and I think to myself, Bertie, you could use one of those glass things that you put the nuts in with the blades and the bam 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 handle on top the nut choppers 
and you could keep that out here in your shed and you could chop your little nuts up every day instead of squeezing them with your fingers. Why, Bertie, I think you're right. Or Amy, Bertie says. <laughs> it's just a, like I talk to myself. I think there's a nut chopper in the barn with all of that estate sale stuff I cleaned out. Let's go check. So I head in to the estate sale clean out stuff and I start looking for a nut chopper. I'm shopping in my own stuff. Before long, I have a waffle maker sitting on the table that I'm wanting to bring in. I have a coffee grinder sitting on the table that I'm wanting to bring in. I have a, a three little Tupperware bowls that I'm wanting to bring in. And no nut chopper. So I'm like, Birdie, you don't need a waffle maker. You have a waffle maker in the house. I know, Amy, but this waffle maker is like the 1950s version. And it's so adorable, and I love it. Yes, I know, Birdie. But what happens when that waffle maker dies, and you've gotten rid of your more modern one, and now you're stuck with this dead waffle maker? Put it away, Birdie. You don't need it. Why do you have a coffee grinder? You already have one on the wall, an old-fashioned one that you grind with your hands because you decided if poop hits the fan, you would need a manual coffee grinder that you could turn with your hands and you wouldn't require electricity. This is an electric coffee grinder. Put it up. See, I'm, I'm talking myself in and out of stuff. I had a whole pile of stuff to bring in. And I had to tell myself, put it all away. You don't even need it. What am I going to do with myself, you guys? I am such... Then this guy that I'm watching with the prompts, I notice in the background, I'm watching him in his art room and he's showing his face. He's doing some talking. And I'm noticing in the background... He has nothing on the walls. And like, you know, you've seen my place. You've seen my art room. You've seen all the crap I have sitting everywhere. I have stuff everywhere. Every inch of my walls is taken up. It's like that in my house. I Every picture the kids color and give to me from... When my 17-year-old granddaughter was six, is still hanging on the wall because I cannot take it down. <sighs> then when I see this, I think, well, these people can't be very artsy because they don't keep, you know, they don't fill their living space with their beauty that they create. What's wrong with these people, you know? I'm, I find myself being critical of him when I'm the one that has the problem, not him. I'm the one that can't maintain myself with all of my junk. It's not junk. It's treasure to me. But that's where it starts with the people who have an issue. They probably think that those dirty... Uh, cream cheese wrappers are treasure to them and that's why they're keeping them you see what I'm saying it's the same concept just because I'm not starting to accumulate trash doesn't mean I'm not at the tip of an iceberg with a problem that I could uh, have in the future if I don't keep it reined in you know what I'm saying so anyway, that is what I've been beating myself up with today. There's not been any gentle, you are, you can do this, you are strong, you are worthy stuff. I have really been telling myself what I need and what I don't need today. It's been discipline birdie, discipline Amy day. Birdie is my art girl. Amy is the girl that lives in the house. 
So anyway, I just wanted to air that out and see if anybody else, you know what? This man, I don't know, he's on, I got it because it's blue, but this little man is sitting here and he needs somebody to talk to. He's probably saving pickle jars at home and this guy's not even listening to him. He's watching the ball game. This man deserves a place on our cards. He needs to be heard, right? Anyway, am I alone in this or do you guys, do any of you guys find yourself struggling with this kind of stuff? You know, tell me about it. I, I need to know I'm not alone. I need to know me and this man here are not alone. So what I was going to do was I was going to come out and do a video on those art prompts and I will another day. I found me a notebook that I want to turn into my prompts journal. It's like a, it used to be a day planner, a spiral brown bound date planner and um okay, each one of these have some color on it. This one does not. And so I'm going to make that my art prompts book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this guy gave me an idea. He, he sat and gave you different ideas of how you could do your prompts, just guidelines, not rules or anything. And um, one of his ideas was, you know, you could do on a, a page spread on one side, you could do your prompt collage or, or painting or however you want to do it. And on the other side, you could kind of journal about it. You could say what your prompts were. You could say how you were feeling that day when you did it. You could say, um, let's find, let's say one of the prompts is, uh, is imagination. You could say what came to your mind when you thought of imagination. How did you take that word and turn it into your prompt? Or jewelry. How did you, did you do a gold mine? Did you do a string of pearls? Did you do um, costume? You know, somebody who would wear a costume with costume jewelry on it. How did you interpret the word jewelry or imagination? And how were you feeling when you did this? And maybe what prompt you liked the best? Or... What was a struggle for you? And, you know, kind of journal about it on the other side. I think I'm going to do it that way. Instead of every page just doing prompts and not explaining any of it. And I'm going to date it. Because we go through so many seasons of our life that one day I'll sit and look at it and go, Oh, remember when I was having trouble collaging? And now I'm a pro master at it. It was in 2023, you know? So I'm going to start that, but I couldn't today because I needed to talk about my issues. So I decided to get my, you know, I started this uh, Rolodex, what, last year? And I think I was still in the house in the winter last winter when I started it. And uh, I was going to do a Rolodex card every day for a year. And I made it to like uh, day 53 and petered out and went on to something else. So I am not wanting to get caught up to doing it every day because that's too much pressure and I don't want it. But I figured while I was talking to you, I could at least throw six of them together and try to use the prompts at the same time, kickstart my prompt thing and see where it leads us. Oh my goodness. I have got this drawer in backwards and that's throwing my brain off. I've separated my drawer with, with my uh, scratchy paper. What do you call this? Painty paper type stuff. And I've got it separated into painted section um, neutral section, tissue paper section, 
and uh, uh, what do you call it? Scrapbook paper section. And boy, I'm having a hard time keeping it all in the right section. So, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but yesterday I took my little attache case, or whatever you call it, uh, briefcase, one, two, three, four, five, and that I had also showed at one time that used to belong to a little typewriter salesman and I turned it into my traveling art case. I was on Instagram one day. I knew I wanted to turn it into an, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. I knew I wanted to turn it into an art case, but uh, just didn't quite know what I was gonna do yet. So one day I was looking um, at Instagram and I run across this post of T-Ball. I call her T-Ball. I think her name is T-Bomb. And she was showing this um, briefcase that she had decorated with slow stitch. And I fell in love. I was like, yep, that's what I have to do. So I messaged her and asked her because I started on it and I couldn't figure out if I needed to just glue all the pieces on or if I needed to sew them together. You couldn't really tell if she'd stitched all of them together or how she did it. So I messaged her and asked her advice on that. And, uh, okay, I, I got to think here for a second. And, um... She said, yeah, that she had slow stitched at first and then laid it over where it needed to go and then glued it all down. So I, while I was listening to Janet Nash on Monday, I slow stitched my pieces together. And then yesterday I glued them on and I, on the inside, I Mod Podged um, napkin, you know, in the little trays where my stuff would sit. And I just had a blast. It was so pretty. Anyway, I took pictures and made a reel of it on Instagram. So if you if you watch me on Instagram, you might jump over there and check it out. It's adorable. And if you watch me on Facebook, I put it on there too. Because, you know, a lot of my Facebook people probably have no idea what I do. They're friends and family from high school and everything else. And so I thought, you know, you need to share with them once in a while so they can see exactly what you get yourself into. So I I also put it on Facebook. This will probably take forever to dry. That's okay. We've got forever. I've got forever. See, I just feel better getting it off my chest. I just want to know that I'm not alone out there, that other people have issues like this that you have to talk yourself through and talk yourself out of and discipline yourself and All that good jazz. Or am I the odd sort that my mom used to say I was? <laughs> I remember she called me like when we when she would introduce me 
to people like we'd go to town and maybe we run into somebody she worked with or something and she'd say this is my daughter Amy she's my little odd sort that's how she would introduce me to people and I just was like why am I such the odd sort why am I an odd sort it's because I was different and she didn't um she didn't embrace me being different you know she she marked it up as being odd that's okay because later on I decided I'm my husband told me you're not odd honey you're unique that's what he'd say at, at first he would say I was eclectic but he couldn't remember how to say eclectic so he told me I was epileptic and I'm like, I'm epileptic. And he's like, yeah, you know, you just like a lot of stuff. And I'm like, you know, different things. You're always wanting to try something different. Or I said, that's eclectic, not epileptic. <laughs> so I remember when I was um, little, two people that I loved wanting to pretend like I was was Pippi Longstockings or um, Huck Finn. So what I would do is, does everything have a tissue paper? No, this one does not. So let's put, let's just put a little something down here to cover this up. So I remember I would go in the house and I had a pair of shorts that my mom let me cut up and I fringed the bottom of the, the blue jean shorts and I had a plaid shirt that I would wear and that was my Huck Finn outfit and and I had a stick with a bandana full of whatever I wanted to put in it Oreo cookies or whatever I had I would tie it up like a hobo and tie it onto that stick and I would go out to play Huck Finn I'd go in the woods down at the creek or wherever and I'd be Huck Finn for the day and I would be dressed in my garb and I'd head out the door and my mom would say Amy you're such an odd sort because she'd see that I was, you know, dressing like my pretend person and headed out the door. Or I would be Pippi Longstocking. I never had long hair, but I would paint freckles. I would take her eyebrow pencil and I would put freckles on my cheeks and I would wear my mismatched socks and I'd head out the door. I'd wear you know, whatever. I never liked dresses, but I'd wear shorts or whatever with my mismatched socks and I'd head out the door and I was going to be Pippi Longstockings that day. Oh, Amy, you're such an odd sort. So now I totally embrace it because how many kids have imaginations like that nowadays? I'm thankful I had it. You know, it helps you actually as an artist. I think. I'm telling myself it does. Anyway. But, yes, I grew up Amy the Odd Sort. And that's okay. I'm over it now. It explains a lot about me because, you know, a lot of things that you are as a child stay with you when you grow up. You know, that imagination that you don't grow out of it. It grows up with you. I still love to watch those kind of shows. I still love to watch, um, what's her name? Pollyanna. I love to watch Swiss Family Robinson. Those are not just child shows to me. I still enjoy watching them. Mary Poppins. I love all that. So yeah, don't grow up and let go of your inner child. She's still there. He is still there, Barry, if you're a guy. Don't ever let go of it because life's too short not to embrace that person you are inside. Don't let anybody tell you you have to grow up and be an adult. Oh, come on. I know you're in there.
So today I'm going to, when I'm done with this video, I'm going to go out into my camper and I'm going to thin out my jars. I'm going to start with the one in the house that I have saved with the pickle jars. And I'm going to, you know, one side of me says, what does it hurt? You know, that's my little camper in the rock garden. If I don't put something in that little cubby, it's not like it's taken up usable space. I don't have a thing to put out there. See, one side of me says that. It's not hurting anything sitting out there. And another side of me says no, because if you let yourself start, it'll just keep going and going and going. I'm just going to put this on my painty paper. Or whatever you want to call this, backdrop paper. And... Uh, now I want to, I want to go over them with a little bit of paint, but I got to get these trimmed off a little bit. My Lori Marie Jenkins I'm channeling today because she used to put her underpants on and you know what, just some of these can just fold over. I'm going to put something on the back anyway. I just didn't want to bore you with that. I usually put book page or something on the back just to cover it up. But I didn't want to bore you with that. You're probably already bored enough just listening to my counseling. But uh, Lori Marie Jenkins, she puts her underpants on first. And then she'll go over it with her paint, like, uh, kind of like glaze it, you know, that you can still see the, the underpants underneath the texture of that. So I'm channeling Lori Marie, which I do a lot. Oh, 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 I've got so much to tell you. Hold on. I wonder if I can find that paper. Oh, I wrote it down. Okay, let me just continue here for a little bit. I can't tell you without the paper telling who the people are because that they need to be... I'm just going to tell you. And then I will announce it again on another video and say it at the beginning so that I can... Uh, so that I can one, two, three, four, five. So I can tag like Shannon Green so that she can watch what I'm saying about her. Now we're just going to talk behind her back because it's too far into my video to make her watch all this. I won't tag her in this video. Um, so I'm on what? What was I on? I don't know. In Pinsta, uh, Instagram or it might have been her Facebook page because we're friends on Facebook and I see this post of Shannon Green saying I'm going to host my first craft retreat in Fayetteville, Arkansas and I'm like what the heck I love Shannon Green like she is my she's my first love She's the one that first got me into art journaling. Her and Lori Marie Jenkins. Back way, 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 way back. Like eight or nine or ten years ago. I think it was 2013. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Yeah, it's been ten years. Okay. I loved Shannon Green. Now she's hosting her own retreat in Arkansas, four and a half hours from me. Are you kidding me? I have to go. But I'm thinking, how do I, she said, watch for the sign up. I don't know how to watch for a sign up. Where does a sign up, how do you watch for a sign up? I don't know. So, 
um, I'm just going to, I really need some colors. I need, I don't know what colors to use. I'm just going to put a color beside each one. I'm just going to grab them. Whoops. And I'm just going to put a, just not going to look. I'm just going to grab a color and put it beside each one of them. Um, that, I'm going to have to put that one back. Okay. So these, I'm going to put these colors beside each one and I'm going to mix and match and use at least two on each one. So I message her and I say, Shannon, I don't know how to watch for your sign up. You know, I've never done this before. It was, first of all, I struggled with myself because it's $350 and I'm like, holy cow. You know me, I am El Cheapo. I can't spend $350 on myself. I can't, can't do it. Now, something I wanna do here, I've gotta stop and I wanna get a med, uh, I'm gonna get some of this clear varnish because it's not see-through enough for me. And I want it a little more see-through. So, I told her, I have to know when your sign-up is because if I don't get in, because they're only, they were only taking 20 people, okay? Hold on, hold on, hold the four. Okay, I told her, I, I have to know when your sign up is because if I'm not one of those 20 people in this class, I may surely die and I don't think you want that on your conscience. So she messaged me back and, and laughed at me and, uh, and said, you know, told me where to go and what to do to sign up. So, um, okay, these two colors have been used. I'm going to let these dry. So I'm signed up and I'm going to this retreat in April. I'm one of the 20. I cannot tell you. She is not teaching and I have a list of the women. It's four half day classes. And I have a list. I know Rosemary Morse is one of them. And I cannot think of the other three, but I wrote them down and I will share who those people are because uh, maybe you guys, I'll tell you what, go to Shannon Green's Facebook page and look if you want to be one of those 20 and get your name in there. I'm taking my camper. I'm going to take my camper down there and stay. There is a little campground about, well, I'm kind of deciding which one I want to go to. There's a campground about five minutes from the convention center or whatever, where they're having their little retreat. And uh, there's also a, a little lake there, a little city, Fayetteville Lake, that um, I'm contemplating going to that one too, so... I don't know. It, it's, I don't know how far it is. It's in the city, so it can't be too far from the little convention center. So, I'm going to take my little camper. And I'm going to camp and play and meet Shannon Green. She's not one of the teachers. She is the host, and she's going to be helping at each one. But she's not one of the teachers, which is a bummer. I would love... But she'll be there, and I get to meet her and hug her neck, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bucket list check off for me, totally, totally, totally. Ooh, yuck! This is kind of grody. Wow, I don't know. I'm really putting more more paint on these than I had really kind of wished. So I'm going to back off a little bit. I was getting a little too excited, wasn't I? OK. 
okay? Now, the only one we have left that we have not used is this blue. It's so weird. I'm really hearing a big truck outside and it's, you know, like it sounds like a tractor, a big tractor moving or digging or working outside. And, and I'm pretty sure there's not anything out there. I'm pretty sure it's the ringing in my ears. Uh, it's not, I don't always have a ring. Sometimes it's a truck. Sometimes it's a truck driving or working a tractor or sometimes it's a sump pump. You know how you hear the sump pump in your basement kick on and off? Sometimes that's the noise that's in my ear. Always the ringing is there. I have two tones. I have a different tone in each ear and then um, today it's the truck and I keep wanting to get up and go out and see what the truck is doing, what the tractor or dump truck or whatever is doing outside on the road, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Isn't that crazy? That is enough to send a girl to therapy right there. The, the sounds that go on in my, with the ringing of my ears. Usually in the morning when I'm laying flat, it's the sump pump with the ringing. Usually when I'm sitting up every once in a while, it's the truck or the tractor. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I wake my husband up and say, is there a truck outside, you know, parked in the road? Is there a truck out there? No, it, I hear it. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so here we go. We've got our color on. And now I'm going to dry them and come back. Okay, here we go. I have gone ahead and found a few things. I almost went AWOL and forgot about my prompts. So one of my prompts is add fiber or beads. Oh, I got to get that. Okay, I can just grab that here and I will use the stapler to put that on. Okay, let's see here. Let's do, let's just put these up here. I gotta have room. One of ours is add a flower. One of them is add fiber and beads, space. So I had them spaced out, I'm using that. One of them is draw a coffee or a teacup. I did not. Some of them I cut out just because of time. And I'm doing them all just a little different. This guy here has, let's see how this works, has flowers on his hat. So I'm going to use him. And I am going to draw a coffee cup in his hand. It's a little frog. See how slightly blurry I am? Because I've zoomed in or out. Oh, that aggravates me. See, it clears up when I do it the way it's supposed to. Okay, so he is there, and I'm going to put a coffee cup in his hand. Okay, the little steam going up. So this one here is knocking out two frogs with one lily pad. We have the flower and the coffee. So that's two of those prompts. I'm going to ink it. 
which one did we want to put it on? Um, we're going to put that one on this one here. And there, okay, so let's go ahead and put him on here. Okay, let's go ahead and take this little stamp and put another little flower over there. And let's go ahead and grab a piece of this. Let's glue it up here like a little tab. I may go over it later with a, you know, just sew over it real quick. Okay, this one I think is done. It's got the map, the flowers, the fiber, the coffee cup, the uh, space, uh, flowers, map, space, coffee cup, and fiber or beads. Bam. Marked out. That one's done. Let's go ahead and do this one. This one here is flowers. glue that over here I'll trim that off where it sticks over I'm trying to hurry because we're getting carried away here some um, fiber let's put a little tag a tab on it on the top And I will staple that on. Okay. And what else do we need? We need a coffee cup for this one. Huh. Did I not get enough coffee cups for everybody? Okay, looks like we're going to have to draw another one. Now, this man, remember, he needed to be listened to. So, he could have a coffee cup in his hand. But I really feel like he needs to be in here today. Somebody needs to listen to him. Hmm. How can he fit in here? He just looks like... Well, we're just going to have to put this guy in here. We're just going to put a coffee cup in there. And you know, it's not illegal. I can go in here and add stuff later. If I find something that looks like it would add to this. Okay, that one's done. For now. This guy, we need to help him. He needs... Um, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on. Okay, we're going to just... We're going to put just a saying on here. I will know... The, why this man needs to be listened to. But to the untrained eye, they're going to think he's telling this guy beside him that you're the cream in my coffee. That has something to do with coffee or tea. 
and it will be a nice little layer under the man. Okay, let's put this on here. We need the flower. This guy can go on here, and then we'll stamp a flower on. All right, let's see what we can do here. I am just about out of this glue stick, but yay, I'm using it up. Oh, we need a little fiber, don't we? I'm going to put this, let's, I'm just getting, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hurry because of the time and it's not enjoyable. So I need to just calm down, forget about the time. If you're busy, shut it off and go. But I, I got to, this has to be enjoyable. I can't just hurry because I, I don't like the time, right? It's part of what art therapy is, is enjoying yourself. This is the flower part of our prompts and this is the fiber part of our prompts and my fingers are sticky okay so there's our next one done And that's three down, three to go. So go get you a coffee if you need to. It's going to take a minute. Here's our flower part. And there's also flowers here. Here's our coffee or tea part. It is not hand drawn, but I'm making my own rules. And we need a little bit of fiber. Let's put this in there like this. Okay, so there's that one. This one here, I really need to feel, I feel. It needs to be inked around the outside. I'm feeling it. And I have to go through and cut these little uh, notches out for my Rolodex. See, sometimes that's just the finishing touch. Sometimes they just don't look finished to me until they have a little something something around them all right now let's just go ahead and ink this one while we're at it this one has flowers in the stencil that I put on there I mean, look at me. Yay, I have a cup of coffee on there. That's kind of boring. But for now, it's done. And I can go through any time and add to that. So, we need some fiber. Fiber. 
I'm going to take this fiber and glue it on. You know what? I'm going to make a little, let's just make a little cluster. Look here. This guy, this one here has some slow stitching on it. So let's do that. Let's make a little. cluster. Stick it up kind of like a tab. Put a little bit of trim over here. Okay. Now, that one's done. One more. Now, this is some guys who are in a coffee factory, and they are taste testing little shots of coffee. You know how they slurp it around and, and then spit it in the urn? That's what they're doing. And there's already a flower on here. And then all I have to do is add a little cloth cluster. Okay, now let's glue him on, then we'll ink him up, and that will be it, you guys. I'm glad you hung out with me today. Next time I'll work in my little uh, prompts book and explain who the guy was, so you can go check him out. He's very... Um, very good at instruction. He's definitely uh, has a gift of teaching. And thank you, Spotted Vaughn, for contacting my, me last night. I was up yesterday. I took a very long nap and had a cup of coffee uh, in the afternoon. I didn't wake up till 6.30, so I was totally not ready for bed. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put another little stamp on here. And here I am out here at 1230 piddling with my, I have started another journal, my faux, I call it faux Tim Holtz journal. He's got a bunch of fabrics for sale and I have been making my own fabrics. So I was out here making me some tags and stuff for that. And I get this light lights up on my phone and it's fawn sending me a link to this guy because she knew I'm wanting prompts. And uh, I said, shouldn't you be in bed? And she said, yeah, I am in bed. She said, I had a nap and a coffee. And I said, same here. <laughs> so we were both up late last night. And, um, and so today I... I pulled him up and checked him out and ran a copy of the prompts off, so I'll have them. I really do want, I'm praying, because you know when I when I need something, I look for it at a sale, estate sale, garage sale, whatever, and the Lord usually gives it to me without paying for it. I don't want to go out and buy tongue depressors, but I want my prompts on tongue depressors. For some reason, I want a jar of them sitting out here of tongue depressors. It's just in my mind. So I'm asking the Lord to send some my way, and he will. So I'm just going to wait for my tongue depressors to appear at a sale. And... Uh, and I'll put all my prompts on a tongue presser. I have a hundred more on a page that I ran off today that I'm going to be putting in this book, using for the book. So there we go. That is our six little cards. We did pretty much the same thing on each one, and they each one looked completely different. So, I'm glad you hung out with me today, and um, I'll give you more information on the next one.
Bye-bye from Birdie.